about the uh, Citizen Kate experiment. Um, I'm really happy to be here today and uh, of course like Hugh I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the tremendous support from um, not only our volunteers but also our sponsors for the Citizen Kate experiment. Um, at any one location, to summarize it, at any one location you would see the corona for about two or two and a half minutes from the 2017 eclipse. The idea of Kate was to establish a network of telescopes along the eclipse path so that at any given time one telescope was in the shadow of the moon collecting images of the solar corona. So if you look carefully, you can see an image of our sites on the globe there. Um, we had uh, a lot of uh, interesting uh, funding to support this experiment. Our total budget, as you see here on the, uh, on the top, was about 850 k for a two-year project. This included um, support for some students and a test run in Indonesia in 2016. Most of that pie was filled up with a, a grant from NASA SMD EPO. But for the instrumentation for our 2017 event, um, we had a collection of private, corporate, and federal money. The pie chart below shows the instrumentation budget, uh, which about a quarter of was uh, given to us through an NSF grant. It would, the whole project would not have been possible without our private and corporate sponsors, so ColorMaker, MathWorks, Celestron, and Daystar are the people who supported that uh, primarily. And of course, my co-authors are the real heroes. Here's a list. Um, if you see a typo, please let me know after the talk. <laughs> we had um, 260 volunteers taking data on the day of the eclipse. Um, they came from 27 universities, 22 high schools, from five national labs, and from a collection of informal science uh, education centers. Um, of those, 117 were students, ranging from an eighth grader in South Carolina all the way up through graduate students. So we had quite a diverse group of people. Now, why would they ever want to be involved in a project? They were excited about the eclipse, of course, but why would they want to give their time and travel money to be involved in Kate? Well, the reason is they were really excited to be involved in cutting edge science. The inner corona is notoriously difficult to observe, especially from the solar surface out to about 2.5 solar radii. Above 2.5, we have uh, measurements from LASCO C2. And then on the disk of the sun, we have EUV and X-ray uh, data that shows us the hot plasma. But uh, the gap here um, is filled up nicely during an eclipse. Here's a frame from our 2016 Indonesia experiment. And there's a lot of exciting solar physics going on in this data gap. In particular, the solar wind goes through an acceleration. That was our primary science goal for Kate, is to look at the solar poles and these little magnetic streamers called polar plumes and measure the outflow velocity and try to understand the acceleration if you see changes. Uh, so that inspired people. And so how did we do? Here's the uh, time for the eclipse. Again, we had 93 minutes uh, available to us from, South Car uh, from Oregon to South Carolina. Uh, we had some instrumentation dropouts. You can see some gaps here when some of the telescopes failed. But for the most part, we had at least one telescope taking data during the eclipse. And at one point, we had five telescopes in the shadow taking the images as well. <clears throat> if we look uh, further and ask uh, how did clouds impact our observations, then we have the, the lower plot which shows as little line segments, the clear data taken at every site um, as a function of our uh, longitude, site longitude. And here the pink vertical stripes represent the real gaps from instrumentation and from clouds as well. So overall we had about 89% coverage, uh, meaning that for 83 of the minutes that were available to us, uh, for 83 of the 93 minutes, we have data images of, of the corona. So, you know, again, these guys did a fantastic job. This has never been done before. And what that means is that now we have a new problem because we have data analysis that no one has ever done before. And it's proving to be uh, challenging, as, as Hugh alluded to. Um, in the background is one image taken from Sienega High School from Tucson uh, on their trip to Pawnee City, Nebraska. And you can see, I hope you can see the polar plumes in the North Pole, the South Pole, uh, prominence on the limb. <clears throat> and then there's a streamer in the Southeast part of the sun. And, uh, It'd be great if everybody was perfectly aligned and rotated the same, but of course they're not. Uh, so we could use the moon. The moon is a really obvious high contrast object in this, but the moon moves during a total eclipse. And also, as we move from our uh, observing, uh, our sites in Oregon through South Carolina, we see that the apparent size of the moon also changes in the Cape data. 
So in order to align the data, we have to use the solar features, and they have pretty low contrast. We've tried enhancing them with a Sobel filter. Here's an edge enhancement technique. This reveals, for instance, more structure inside the, the streamer. Um, and so I'll show you the movie. Uh, we have a first cut movie here where we've done that alignment. <coughs> you can see from the twisting of the uh, edge of the field of view how everybody inserted their camera into the telescope slightly differently. So we're trying to take that out. Um, but we do see some, <laughs> uh, we did see some. Okay. Do you want to talk while I do that? Uh, yeah. I'll restart. We did see some, oh, here it is. Some motions, even with our first uh, cut analysis. Uh, well, so, so over here. Are we not, not yet, it's launching here. Um, but we do see some outflows. Yeah. So in the uh, in the north and south polar regions, you can see some fast things. Here we think that the velocities are about 100 kilometers per second or so. Uh, and this is really what we're looking for. We're looking for a solar wind outflow into the poles of the sun. Um, in the streamer in the southeast, you can see a slower uh, frequent velocity, about 10 kilometers per second outflow. And we think this is the remnants or the part of a CME that happened uh, during the eclipse. Um, but we don't have yet is the signal to noise to really look for station, uh, flows along the stationary objects. Uh, this movie covers our entire data span, but it doesn't include all of the data. When we co-add after successfully registering all of the subframes, we'll have about a factor of eight better signal to noise, and we're hoping to find the solar wind outflow along the stationary uh, filaments as well. All right. So uh, there's a lot of good science to be done. We're in the process of registering the images to do that. But in addition, Kate uh, had a huge outreach uh, program. Again, due to the hard work of all the, the people involved. Before the event, we directly impacted about 17,000 people with talks along the path of totality, and various fairs. And then with exposure on the day of the eclipse, primarily through uh, TV, uh, like NASA Edge, uh, ABC, CBS, and Discovery, um, we had a reach to about 100 million or maybe even more viewers across the, uh, the globe. So what's next? Because of the way the funding was developed, each of our uh, volunteer groups has kept their telescope and their equipment. So they're really thrilled and stoked after having taken excellent data during the eclipse, and they're looking for something to do. So this is where you insert your ideas. You're, you're our third resource right now. Um, we have some really advanced uh, people who have used their equipment to look for exoplanet transits. Here's a transit of a rather bright or a deep exoplanet uh, event with our Kate telescope. We also have linear polarization capability on some of the telescopes. So here's a map of the polarization around the Pleiades. Um, so these types of experiments can be done, but these are sort of one-offs right now. But we have a network of 68 people across the country who have training on these telescopes. So if you have ideas, uh, you can contact us on the web, or else we have several posters in the session that Jay mentioned. Um, so we'll be downstairs after the after the oral session. Please stop by and let us know what you think. Thanks. Yes, uh, thank, thank you very much. We have time for a question. And let me just repeat uh, one of the last comments. There are 21 posters. Uh, as I mentioned, some of you came in late. Uh, mentioned at the beginning, there are 21 posters that are on view from 5.30 to 6.30 and Dr. Schaefer's uh, paper tomorrow in the sun section uh, in one of the Potomac rooms on the, uh, on the editing experiment. A question for, can you say what uh, Kate stands for in Citizen Kate? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a mouthful. It's Continental America Telescopic Eclipse Experiment. But of Con course, I've got a 14-year-old daughter that has the same name, so <laughs> it's another interpretation. Okay, so that's, uh, but that's like uh, that's like Karen, the pronunciation instead of Sharon for Pluto, for personal relations. So you're you're in the in group now in the, in in, uh, in knowing this. Uh, so everybody, be ready for 2024 with all this practice, and it looks great. Thank you very much, Matt.